Hello, it's Mr. Wyman here, and it's time for another Wonder Women of History. Uh, and today we're going to learn about Madame Chiang Kai-shek. I am going to struggle with a lot of the pronunciation of names and places, names of places and names of people in this particular comic. Um, and maybe this will be a... I, I want to read through it anyways. Um, because I want to learn about Madame Chiang. Um, this could very well be uh, an opportunity to inspire some research where we want to learn how to pronounce things. And I think pronouncing names correctly um, is very classy and we should always work at trying to do that. So without further ado, let's learn about this wonderful, courageous woman. The strong woman of China. Some call her that lovely, dynamic, in, indefati indefatigable. <laughs> now this isn't a name, it's just a long word that we should probably look up. Indefatigable, co-leader of China's destinies, whose mighty spirit surges across continents and oceans. This remarkable champion of millions of struggling people ranks already, while yet in mid-career, among the wonder women of history. I wonder if that means at the time of this writing, she wasn't, she was still alive. She hadn't died yet. This is the, un, the unanimous verdict of hundreds of distinguished women who have nominated candidates for the world's honor roll of wonder women. In other words, um, the people who put together this comic and this series, Wonder Women of History, it sounds like from this text, they had people mail in um, nominees and, and people, women that they wanted to read about. And this is one of the winners. The secret of Madame Chiang's great power lies in her irresistible persuasiveness her ability to captivate and convince others, make them obey her commands and love it. <laughs> Born as Mei Ling Sung in 1899, oh, so she's, she's probably dead by now. <laughs> if she ha hadn't died, she would be, so this would be one year until 1900, and then add to that, 121 years because right now it is 2021 that would make her 122 years old I, I don't think so i don't think she survived so born in 1899 in nongku a little village in china now madame chiang kai shek is already recognized as one of the world's greatest champions of democracy. And what's democracy? Democracy is a form of government where uh, the people get to vote for um, the, the, the leaders of the government. Um, and there are governments where that doesn't take place. Like kings and queens, monarchies are, are different from democracies in that just one, a king or queen, a family rules over all the people and the people don't vote. They just like accept it. And the king or queen, um, their successors, the, the, their offspring, their children become the next ruler just by um, being related. That's completely different from a de democracy. And there are other forms of government too. Democracies are the, probably the most fair form of government because the people who are being ruled by the government get to choose the government. All right. Five-year-old Mei Ling Sung faces a stern parent in her home at Shanghai, China. I don't know if this is her parent or a parent. Please, please, revert, revered mother, may I attend the Mick Tire school for girls with my sisters, Yi Ling and Ching Ling? No, you're far too young. But Mei Ling's power of persuasion quickly subdues her father, Charlie Soong, who was educated in America. Now remember, she's only five years old. Papa, 
You know little American girls start kindergarten at five. Hmm, that's true. You may go, little lantern. Little lantern must be like a pet name for her. The big girls at school decide Mei Ling is a nuisance and plot to get rid of her at hide and seek. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then look, it says dash fifty. I wonder if she said fifty, like accidentally next, or if she s simply kept counting until she got to fifty. You must count up to one hundred. Oh, look, they're making her count like too, too long, right? We'll run away and play by ourselves. Yi Ling comforts her little sister. What mean girls to play that trick? I'll make them sorry. No, sob, make, uh, no, I'll make them like me. Mm. So Mei Ling is planning on using her powers of persuasion to change these girls' minds. And sob would mean like she was crying, right? It's like onomatopoeia. Little Mei Ling makes tea for the older girls and persuades them to like her. You sweet little thing, we'll never be mean to you again. We like you, Sie Sayo Mei. We want you to play with us. And look, this text, this text feature of being bold um, uh, makes it seem like these words are really meant and have stronger feeling than just, oh yeah, we want you to play with us. They actually do. At the age of nine, so this is four more years, Mei Ling goes to America to join her sisters at Wesleyan College for Women in Macon, Georgia. I actually don't even know how to pronounce that. Macon, Georgia? Honored to meet you, Mr. College President. I want to attend your school with Ching Ling. Now, wait a minute. This is a college and she's nine years old? Hmm. Ha ha. You're much too young, my dear. That's what I was thinking. Let's see if she can persuade this guy. But Mei Ling's persuasiveness triumphs again. See, your daughter, Elise, is my age. She and I can study together. Er, that's an idea. I'll form a special class for your, you younger girls. Now remember, so this is, she's nine. She was born in 1899. So what year is it? It's the year 1908, right? So it's still really early in the 20th century. May. Mei Ling turns her special college class of three little girls into the Tripuletas or Puletes Society. Meeting, please come to order. I propose we start a college newspaper. Whoa, a newspaper, wow. And it looks like she has a gavel that she's banging. <laughs> but who will read it? Five, five copies of the Tripuletas uh, Pu Pulates' paper are produced every day. Price, five cents. Wow. Mei Ling cleverly persuades girls to buy the paper by typing each copy separately who appeal to a different customer. Oh my goodness, so she's just really persuasive here. Um, oh, Mei Ling's society column says, I'm the prettiest girl in college. <laughs> She's really putting on the charms here. My paper doesn't say that. It says, I'm the cleverest girl in Wesleyan. Here's your copy, Adelaide. See what it says about you. So I wonder if this... Yeah, I bet this is um, Mei Ling. And from, from over here, she has the green like dress on. And, and Mei Ling is kind of selling the paper, right? Like each paper, here you go, check this out. It might talk about you in here. In 1913, at the age of 15, Mei Ling enters Wesleyan, Wes, Wesley College near Boston. But it is too much of a south, southerner but it, but it is too much of a southerner to like it. 
1913, at the age of 15, Mei Ling enters Wesley College near Boston, but is too much of a Southerner to like it. So I'm not sure if they're talking about Southern United States because she did, um, she had been um, enrolled in the Wesleyan College in Georgia, which is in the Southern United States. So she would have learned customs and um, just the, the way of life um, in Georgia. And now she's in Boston, which is way up in New England, quite far north from Georgia. I, I'm not sure how to interpret that. You have persuaded us, despite your age, to enter you as a freshman, says Dean Tufts. Well, uh, reckon, uh, shan't, oh, you know what, this is dialect, okay? So, well, ah, uh, so, well, I reckon I shan't stay around here very long. I liked Georgia too much to stay away from it, sir. So that's writing the way people may have talked around her in the South. Now she's, she had, she had lived in the South for quite a few years and they were very important years of her growing up. So she would have learned how to talk in, down there. But Mei Ling learns to love Wesley and graduates with high honors. So I guess she stays. Mei Ling Soon, I name you Durant Scholar, the highest academic distinction conferred by Wesley College. Clap, 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 clap. Very impressive. So. Returning to Shanghai after her years in America, Mei Ling advocates, which means works toward, free education for China's millions of illiterate people. She persuades leaders to adopt a public school system and become the first Chinese ever appointed to the Child Labor Commission in Shanghai. Wow. Uh, so apparently before she, before Mei Ling returned to China and advocated for this, it was only the rich people who could afford to send their kids to school because they could pay for the education for their children. The child labor conditions in Chinese factories are shameful. There is only one cure for the utter de degradation of China's laboring classes, and that is education. I will show you how the girls of China can help save our people. Then this persuasive young Chinese woman organized schools for country girls from small towns. Your intensive training in this school has given you a good elementary education. Go out now and teach ignorant adults. The word ignorant means unknowing. So adults who don't know how to read or write or uh, perform the math that these girls learned in school. In the 25 years which have passed since China adopted the free education system, a public education, a tremendous percentage of all China's ignorant hordes, hordes would just be group, a large group of people or, or anything, have been taught to read and write their their now simplified language. So maybe they took the really, really complex language um, and made it more re readable, more legible in that it's it's simplified. That's what I'm inferring here. Um, that, But that would, uh, it sounds like something that we could research. At the house of her brother-in-law, Dr. Sun, or maybe soon, Yat Sen, China's great reformer and first president, Mei Ling meets Captain I Chiang. present Mei Ling Soon. Oh, Lotus Flower, you are truly named Mei Ling. Beautiful life. <clears throat> I wonder if that's what Mei Ling means. Beautiful life in uh, Chinese. Interesting. Chiang rising rapidly to General Li Generalissimo of China 
pays patient court for years to the lovely Mei Ling. Um, pays court or uh, pays patient court means that he waited for her to grow old enough and to develop um, a an admiration or love for him. I implore you again to marry me. Okay, so he asks her over and over and over and over. <laughs> If my mother consents, which means gives her permission, you will not find me unwilling. In other words, instead of saying yes, she says, if my mom's okay with it, sure. Uh, but the stern Mrs. Soong, an earnest Christian, raises a difficult objection. I do not want a soldier in my family, but that I might forgive if you were a Christian. So this is a religious problem. Um, apparently, this general um, did not believe, have the same belief system or religious beliefs as the Soongs. I cannot believe in foreign gods. Foreign means from another place, like another country. Perhaps the Soongs learned about Christianity, a, a different religion than the religion of um, this general. In America it is a very popular religion in America the generalissimo however began to study Christianity very intensely and finally <laughs> do you think maybe he did that in order to because he loved Mei Ling so much Mei Ling I think I see Christianity in a new light your God is a God of truth and justice in that I believe I think I can find peace in your faith. So he he came to the realization that it was worth um, it was worth studying and looking into a different belief system, a different religion, culture, um, in order to become Mei Ling's husband. Let's see what she says. I am very happy. Now there is nothing to stand in the way of our marriage. So they now have so much in common, and they have the same value system the same religion the same beliefs so let's see what happens here I think we can infer simply by the name Madame Chiang um, Kai Shek that she does marry him right happily married to the chief of China's armies Madame Chiang shares her husband's work responsibly and fame she organizes Chinese women to care for war orphans, cure opium addicts, secure equality with men, and spread the new life movement throughout China. You work from 6 a.m. to midnight, Madame Chiang. What do you hope to accomplish? It looks like these might be news reporters. The unification of China. Unification means coming together. So like um, maybe there are uh, different places. Like um, in the United States, we have all the states working together um, to support a federal government, a national um, leadership. We must create a national consciousness, patriotism, a willingness to work together for our country. General Chiang fearlessly visiting Chang, a rebellious warlord, finds himself trapped. I must er make certain demands, General Lissimo. If I'm your General Lissimo, obey me. If I'm your enemy, kill me. Your choice is clear. Against all advisors' opposition, Madame Chiang flies to her husband's rescue. So for these reasons, you must free the Generalissimo and return with me to stand trial. So she presents all of these reasons and explanations in her persuasive way. You have persuaded me. I'll do as you say. Wow, she is powerful. When Japan invades China, Madame Chiang organizes an army of 300,000 women, air raid workers, and inspires them with her own fire and enthusiasm. Fire in this instance doesn't mean literal fire, it means like passion, right? 
ener energy. Women will help win this war and establish universal peace. We pledge our lives to China. After years of appealing to America through press and radio, press meaning newspapers and radio news, Madame Chiang visits this country in person and speaks to Congress. It says this country because this comic strip is written um, by Americans for American children. And here it looks like here she is in front of a bunch of microphones sitting in front of an American flag um, giving a press release. Three cheers for Madam Chiang Kai-shek. Clap, 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 clap. Look, all these people like everywhere hanging over the balconies. It now, this might be like in Congress or in the Capitol. It now remains for you to win this war and construct a world of harmony and peace. So she's talking to the leaders here in America. Hear, hear, clap, clap. And this is the end of um, this particular comics story of Madame Chiang, but I kind of want to read more and find out what she did between this world war that is presented in the, um, cause that's when China or I'm sorry, Japan invaded China. What happened between then Madame Chiang, um, giving this press release and now 2021 throughout the length and breadth of the United States, from Madison Square Garden to the West Coast, millions of Americans cheered that dauntless, irres irresistible woman of China, whose magic combination of beauty, charm, and compelling words exert a tremendous influence, a wonder woman indeed, who fights for justice not only for her own stricken people, but for men and women throughout the world. And here's Wonder Woman's lasso, <laughs> the lasso of truth, celebrating Madame Chiang, Shai, uh, oh, uh, Kai Shek. And thank you for bearing with me through the <laughs> pronunciation of these um, interesting foreign to me words. Look them up, see if you can um, say them better than I can, and maybe even in the comments of this video, put the pronunciation. That would be amazing. Until next time.